It was also referred to as the Great Hurricane of the Antilles. It was also known as Huracan San Calixto and also the 1780 disaster. Look, regardless of whatever anyone called this, it is still, as of today, known as the deadliest Atlantic hurricane on record. Hi, I'm Chris May, writer, producer, and host of This Day in Weather History, now in its second year from the Weather Network in Canada. Today, we are looking way back at what was called the Great Hurricane of 1780, This Day in Weather History. Okay, so for today, I just want to get into this. We're going back three centuries for a hurricane that was so impactful, so history-altering, that it still resonates this many years on. Tricky thing about going as far back as legend remembers, you sometimes don't have the accurate data to properly support it and add relevance. As is the case before the globally accepted naming convention, there are several names by which certain storms were remembered. The actual specifics on the hurricane's track and strength are unknown because the official Atlantic Hurricane Database goes back only to 1851. So with this happening 70 years prior to this, we can only go by whatever might have been written down at the time. It is estimated through census and other primitive documents that between 22,000 and 27,500 people died throughout the Lesser Antilles when the storm passed through them from October 10th, this day in weather history, through the 16th. It has been reliably suggested, though, that the hurricane likely struck the sugarcane-rich island of Barbados as a Category 5 hurricane, with at least one estimate that wind speeds were as high as 200 miles per hour, also known as 320 kilometers per hour. If this holds true, this would be a wind speed greater than any in the recorded Atlantic Basin's history. From here, it continued to tear through, leveling more eastern Caribbean islands, including Martinique, St. Lucia, and St. Eustatius. And by tearing and leveling, I'm referring to the thousands of deaths on those islands caused by this storm. Welcome to year two of this podcast. Right now, you're listening to the full version of today's story on your favorite podcast provider. But there's also the daily podcast video short. They're shot right here in my podcast recording studio, so you get that perspective, but oftentimes they will include visuals from that day's event from when it happened in weather history. So after listening to the full story, go check out the podcast video short on television or online anytime at theweathernetwork.com forward slash weather history. Loyal followers of this day in weather history have noticed that I have a tendency to follow the weather events that surrounded the fighting for and founding of the independence of the United States of America. This storm is no different. It occurred in the midst of the American Revolution and in its movement from the lesser to greater Antilles and then toward the Atlantic seaboard of the New World, the storm caused heavy losses to the British fleet contesting for control of the area largely weakening British control over the Atlantic in its path. So one nation's pain was another nation's power. The hurricane weakened somewhat by the damage it laid upon the islands it crossed. It was next to pass near Puerto Rico, and then after that over the eastern portion of Hispaniola. Along the track it took to traverse these two rather large Atlantic islands, it caused heavy damage to their coastlines. Then it hooked northeast and was last observed as a storm on October 20th as it sailed off into its sunlight past the southeast of Atlantic Canada. When surveying the damage and loss, the death toll from the Great Hurricane alone exceeds that of many entire decades of Atlantic hurricanes since. September 25th, 1998 was the day that was dominated by Hurricanes George and Mitch. But in that episode of this podcast, I compared Mitch's impact to today's monster. In truth, the death toll estimates for the 1780 hurricane are only marginally higher for that of Hurricane Mitch. Remember from that September 25th episode that Mitch was touted as the second deadliest Atlantic storm, second only to this one. And that includes the fact that their figures are likely more accurate. So even at that, 1780 still holds top spot. It was referred to as the Great Hurricane of 1780, Huracan San Calixto, the Great Hurricane of the Antilles, 
and the 1780 disaster. They're all interchangeable because they all mean one thing. This is still the deadliest hurricane in Atlantic history. And it started on October 10th of 1780, this day in weather history. Now, tomorrow is October 11th of 2005. A tropical depression, formerly a hurricane named Vince, became the first tropical cyclone on record to make landfall in the country of Spain. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. It sure did on this day, on this day in weather history, with me, your host, Chris May.